Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 6 on use of modern techniques in watershed management in lecture number 24, today we will discuss decision support systems and applications in watershed management. So, some of the topics covered here in today's lecture include decision support system, its basics, characteristics of decision support system, components of decision support system, DSS structure, application of DSS in water management, applications of DSS in uh, watershed management. Some of the keywords decision support system, characteristics, components and structure. So, as we discussed in some of our earlier lectures, so when we deal with uh, watershed management, we have to develop different plans, different scenarios. So, for each plan, each kind of uh, say for example, if you are going to develop a uh, say check dam structure, so there can be different scenarios like uh, say uh, we can uh, have different locations for the particular check dam or we can have the say specific height of the dam can vary. So, like that various scenarios can be there. So, uh, but each scenario say when we are constructing a dam in a particular area in a watershed, then it has its own impact say like uh, say how much water can be stored and then how much uh, flooding can takes place within the watershed. So, all those impacts will be there. So, when uh, such a plan comes to the decision maker who is going to implement the project and then who is the deciding the what is to be done, where to be done all those things. So, then we will have different scenarios. So, different uh, options are there in front of the decision maker. So, the decision maker has to make a decision that yes, this is the best solution and then he has to adopt, ad adapt it and then he has to go for implementation. So, that way uh, when we are looking for uh, say taking a particular scenario or, or considering a particular scenario or particular option, so uh, we can have uh, a system called decision support system. So, decision support system means a system which helps the decision maker to uh, make a specific decision. So, that way the decision support system uh, say we can say that um, a decision is a recent, recent choice among alternatives. So, we can have different alternatives among that the recent choice is so called the decision and it is done by the decision maker and a decision support system or a DSS uh, means a system that supports a manager or managers working as a problem solving team in the solution of a semi structured problem by providing information or making suggestions concerning uh, specific decision. So, decisions. So, as I mentioned, so we can have different options or different scenarios. So, out of that the decision maker has to make a specific decision, okay, this is what particular thing which he has to do. So, uh, this can be a single manager decision or a group of managers will be taking the decision as a team and then uh, say uh, DSS a decision support system means it is a semi structured uh, say system uh, which uh, helps the decision maker to uh, take the specific uh, decision or the specific uh, decisions. So, in general terms uh, the decision support systems are computer based system designed to support decision makers interactively in thinking and making decisions. So, here uh, say the word is uh, interactively uh, uh, in thinking and making decision is uh, uh, the words these are very important words uh, in this DSS decision support system. So, uh, the decision making can interact with various scenarios and then uh, see the outcome of that particular scenario and then uh, accordingly can take the decision. So, uh, DSS uh, this uh, it is a dedicated uh, system uh, restricted, but well defined uh, area of application. So, that way we can see that uh, the decision support system is a dedicated one and it is, uh, uh, but it is a restricted, but uh, with, uh, with well defined area of applications. So, and then uh, DSS are systems incorporating modeling analysis with the data, database management systems and uh, facilitate logistics of decision making process. So, it is DSS is a uh, group of uh, say various applications so like um, uh, it can be it can include modeling and then it can be include analysis with the data and then uh, uh, digital uh, uh, system or database management systems and then uh, uh, various logistics uh, that support or that help the uh, decision maker. So, that way finally, when we look into all these systems we can say that a DSS are 
the interactive systems that help decision maker uh, systematize uh, the decision making process. So, that way we can say that uh, uh, the decision maker interact use the DSS that means, he is interact with the DSS or it is an interactive systems that to help the decision maker to uh, take the uh, decision. So, that way uh, when we look into the DSS or decision support system uh, say the, the, the say two processes are there one is the process of decision making and then the, the various things which supports the decision. So, that way we can see the differences uh, between the decision making and the uh, decision support. So, decision making is as I already mentioned uh, it is actually a, a decision uh, actually a decision is a choice between alternatives to meet specific objectives. So, we have got the specific objectives like the construction of a check dam or the various uh, uh, rainwater harvest implementation or whatever it is. So, that uh, there is a, a specific choice uh, for the decision maker. Uh, so, uh, and that uh, choices will have the specific objectives. Uh, so, that the decision making uh, the, the it is uh, the process of uh, say which uh, represents uh, different courses of actions. So, we, we have to do say uh, actually the objective may be one objective or different objectives. So, but uh, the there will be different courses of actions as far as the, uh, the, the, the decision and then its implementation is concerned. And then uh, uh, as far as the decision is concerned or the, the various choices which we make different hypothesis can be used and a different uh, use of a, a geographical entity uh, all these are possible uh, in decision making. And then now coming back to decision support, I mean the, the decision support means it can be a model or any other system which uh, uh, supports uh, the decision maker to make the decision. So, decision support actually the, it is the role is to aid the decision maker in the process. And then uh, uh, say in the simplest level of uh, decision support, the, the, there can be an expert uh, advice uh, regarding a decision between the alternatives. So, uh, the engineers or scientists make a different alternatives and the decision maker has to uh, take the decision uh, say uh, by considering the various aspects uh, of the, of the uh, different scenarios. So, and then uh, this is uh, what is happening in the simplest level and in the most complex level uh, say uh, there can be a dedicated computer system or dedicated software uh, and then uh, this decision support system say for example, uh, say uh, a general climatic model. So, a general climatic model which considers so many alternatives, so many scenarios and then uh, uh, a system which is totally dedicated and then uh, uh, what is the po possible uh, this thing. So, uh, for that uh, the decision maker accordingly the various uh, things can be done as far as the the uh, the system which he is uh, uh, for the system which he is taking trying to uh, take the uh, decision. So, that way uh, decision support system say so the, there is a, the process of decision making and then the the uh, things which uh, are helping to uh, take the decision so so called uh, decision uh, support. So, that way as we have seen the decision uh, support system, it's, uh, it has got its own characteristics, it uh, involved uh, uh, many computer models and then uh, generally a, a graphical user interface where the decision maker or the, the other people can interact with it that and then uh, say that this is what is going to happen and this way the decision can be taken. So, so, let us look into some of the important characteristics of the decision support system. Uh, so, this include the uh, ability to support complex decision making. Uh, so, uh, the DSS should have the ability to support complex decision making. Then it should be uh, the DSS should be fast, should give fast response to unexpected situations. Say for example, uh, if there is a flash uh, uh, say heavy rainfall takes take is going to take place and then uh, say the, uh, the, the there are possibility of flooding in particular area and then the decision maker has to make whether the people should be shifted for, from particular uh, locality. So, that way uh, we, we, the decision support system should be very fast uh, 
uh, at a any kind of unexpected situations, so that um, uh, the decision maker can uh, make the decision uh, easily. And then uh, other characteristics include the ability to try different character uh, strategies uh, quickly and objectively. So, the different strategies uh, to be uh, tried uh, say very quickly and uh, uh, objectively according to the set objectives. Then uh, the DSS uh, should improve the management control and organizational organizational performance. So, the, the system the so called DSS should help the manager or the decision maker uh, to improve the total system and um, should have better control over the system and performance should be uh, improved. And then um, the DSS should uh, reduce the costs of modeling considerably. So, uh, say the DSS then number of um, um, uh, say models and number of system uh, behave things will be there and the, the this total system should help the manager to reduce the cost uh, say as far as the particular uh, say selection or particular implementation is concerned. And then uh, uh, large data handling capability should be there for the DSS say especially when we are dealing with uh, uh, water resource management or watershed management we have to deal with uh, uh, large quantity of data like geographical data then uh, uh, climatic data, then land related data like that. So, that way uh, the system should be able to handle uh, large uh, data and then uh, there, there should be good modeling capabilities uh, and then interactive and uh, graphical function to make uh, data easily uh, usable. So, that uh, th these are some of the important uh, characteristics as far as DSS is concerned like um, and the modeling capabilities interactive and then uh, say appropriate graphical user interface should be there. So, that um, uh, those who are feeding the data and then uh, after feeding the data we have to run the models and then uh, various scenarios has to be generated and that corresponding thing should be uh, uh, seen in, in, the, in the interface and then so that uh, the decision maker can easily understand. Uh, what are the various scenarios or alternative plans and then accordingly uh, he can uh, or she can take the uh, decision. Uh, so, now within this context let us look uh, say uh, why do we need a DSS. So, decision support system as we have seen the characteristics we have seen and then um, uh, say why we uh, let, let us look into why do we need a DSS. So, uh, as we can see that many, many of the water resource related problems or watershed management problems it, uh, the problems are very complex and then uh, simply uh, the decision maker cannot take a decision without considering the various aspects of the problem uh, and then uh, uh, without considering various alternatives or scenarios or plans. So, accordingly uh, to, to deal with such complex system uh, we need uh, the decision support system. So, that way here I have listed some of the important points uh, like a semi structured approach to problem solving as far as DSS is concerned and then uh, say wherever a large volume of information is there then uh, DSS is uh, very useful and then uh, DSS integrates many information sources. So, um, either through web or through various uh, computer network uh, say the DSS can integrate uh, many information sources and then um, uh, say most of the time models are very difficult to use uh, if there is no appropriate decision support system is there. And then uh, DSS deals with um, uh, trade offs like um, the trade offs between the social, economic, biophysical, legislation etcetera. So, uh, the, so that gives the DSS gives appropriate links and appropriate um, uh, scenarios when it deals with um, uh, various things related to social aspects, economical aspects or biophysical aspects especially when we deal with uh, watershed management or water related uh, problems. And then uh, DSS identify the pre preferred options for further follow up. So, that is also another important point uh, that is why uh, we have to uh, go for DSS. So, um, generally what happens is that um, say uh, uh, when particular decision to be made to be made by the decision maker. Uh, so, various alternatives will be there and then uh, uh, say uh, to meet the specific objectives often uh, conflicts will be there. I mean if you implement particular scenario or particular plans then what will be the 
problems and then another scenario some other problems. So, there can be in conflicts. So, uh, solving, solving this conflicts is the art of uh, good decision making. So, each scenario or each alternatives have will have its own problems and then there will be conflicts between the alternatives. So, that way uh, as far as the decision making is concerned uh, uh, we can say good decision uh, 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 means to solve these conflicts and then come up with the best solution. Uh, so, that way the DSS will help the decision maker to uh, make the uh, best solution. As we can see that decision support system is not making the decision, the decision say there is always the manager or decision maker will be always there only it is a support system to the decision maker. So, DSS as such does not take the decision, the decision maker has to take the decisions, but it provides uh, timely information then communicate result to a larger uh, uh, audience open and uh, unbiased working then scenario uh, analysis. Uh, so, all these things are possible uh, with the uh, uh, decision support system. So, using a DSS a person responsible for the actual project is able to make uh, rational uh, use of the system without an in-depth in knowledge of modeling techniques. So, we can see that uh, uh, when uh, various alternatives or various scenarios or various plans are there, we may have to deal, uh, we, we have to uh, uh, say make models and then run the models to uh, see that what will happen if that particular scenario is done or the, the uh, plan is done. So, uh, actually the decision maker he does not need or she does not need to know about all these modeling techniques. So, the modeling tech uh, these models will run within the background of the decision support system uh, and then uh, the various alternatives and its corresponding out outcome uh, will be generated and only the decision maker has to understand these outcomes and then accordingly uh, he has to uh, choose the uh, particular alternative or particular uh, plan. So, that way uh, decision support system uh, is a uh, supporting system uh, for the decision maker to, uh, to co come to a particular uh, decision. So, now let us look into say typical decision support system, uh, there can be uh, various subsystems within the decision support system. So, we can see that in most of the our problems especially water or watershed management problems, um, main uh, thing is we have to deal with uh, large quantity of data. So, to deal with the large quantity of data as we have seen in some of the previous lectures, geographic information system or remote sensing all this helps. So, most of the time when we deal with uh, watershed or water related uh, issues, GIS is always uh, a, a good uh, pre-processing tool. Uh, so, GIS will be one of the component and then uh, based upon the available data, database can be generated. And then uh, uh, a knowledge base where the appropriate uh, data can be put and corresponding um, uh, pre-processing can be done. So, that is so called a knowledge base and then corresponding hypertext file where uh, anybody can um, uh, look into those files and then say the comments. So, that way uh, one of the important part of a typical uh, decision support system is the pre-processing tools uh, as uh, listed here. And then of course, uh, say uh, by using this uh, data, uh, we have to run uh, various simulation models or optimization models or, or various kinds of uh, modeling uh, we have to do and then we have to run these models within the computer. So, that is uh, uh, the, the processing or the within this uh, uh, subsystem so called computer models. So, based upon this uh, uh, pre-processed data, the computer models will run and then uh, particular scenarios will be generated and these scenarios um, say actually the computer gives in terms of numbers. So, um, the decision maker will not understand what are the, those data. So, that way uh, we need uh, another uh, subsystem called a uh, post processing tools. So, here uh, say it can be this post processing of the, uh, uh, the simulated results, um, it can be represented in terms of uh, say in graphical forms in bar charts or in animations or in condors or in tabular form. So, that way uh, this results or this outcomes are uh, given to the uh, decision maker uh, by using the graphical user interface. So, and this graphical user interface should be interactive uh, uh, so that uh, the decision maker can even uh, feed various uh, things within the system and then uh, see that what will be happening if any uh, alternative solutions are possible. So, that way a typical decision support system uh, mainly there will be three components. One is the 
pre-processing tools uh, and then second one is the modeling tools like computer models and third one is the uh, post-processing uh, tools. Uh, so, now uh, say uh, like that uh, as we can see this is the typical structure of a research support system and then uh, depending upon the research support system various uh, uh, modeling to be done or uh, various things within the system uh, various components can be there. So, various components of a research support system I have listed here. So, first one is um, the database. So, database uh, generally it can be the spatial variation uh, that means spatial data and then time dependent or temporal data and then uh, uh, we can as I mentioned GIS or remote sensing we can use for uh, spatial data like uh, various maps and all those things can be generated. And then um, uh, another one is the mathematical models. So, the, the computer models which will be running and then uh, generate the results. And then um, another component can be the expert systems. So, this expert system for each um, kind of uh, syst uh, say uh, particular problem or the model we can have expert system with related to simulation or optimizations uh, and then uh, that, ca that can be also a component of the decision support system. And then uh, say we can also use the statistical uh, models, uh, graphical software, spreadsheets, etcetera. Uh, within the DSS, so that that you, uh, whatever you useful for the uh, depiction of particular scenarios, so accordingly we can utilize. And then, so one of the most important component, the other important component is the user interface. So generally nowadays we we are having very effective uh, interactive graphical user interface. So that um, uh, is also one of the important component of any of the uh, effective decision support system. And then the database in a decision support system. So, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, data that are stored in a large pool of uh, from which different applications with the different data requirements can retrieve. So, uh, in, a, in, in an effective, uh, in an efficient DSS system, there will be a database. So, that from using that database, uh, we can retrieve the data or we can uh, give the input uh, the data and then we can get the output uh, in various formats. So, that that can be directly uh, utilized in the in the particular computer uh, models. And then uh, say as far as uh, database is concerned for major categories of data can be the spatial data, I mean the spatial variations uh, in uh, uh, say three dimensions x, y, z and then temporal data like time varying data, then uh, relation data and then attribute data. So, like that various uh, data sets uh, for the particular system, uh, particular problem can be there uh, within the uh, database of the uh, DSS which we uh, consider. And then uh, the other most important component is so called a user interface. So, user interface is a software that helps the decision uh, maker to use the application easily and effectively. So, as I mentioned the decision maker, uh, so it, it is not essential that he should understand all the aspects of the problems or all the uh, modeling what is happening within the system. So, that way the user interface is the what is interacting with the decision maker. So, uh, uh, so this helps the uh, decision maker to deal with the problem or to understand the problem and then take a decision easily and effectively. So, well uh, designed uh, user interfaces can free, uh, free the user from learning complex uh, command languages. So, uh, earlier we say when we used to have this uh, DOS based system, it we have to use uh, very complex uh, commands, but now with the graphical user interface, uh, there is no need of uh, such commands by just clicking the button uh, we can uh, say get to various uh, things. So, that way uh, now the graphical user interface is uh, um, play a major role in the most of the decision support system. A major part of the DSS development efforts. So, that way goes to the design of appropriate uh, user interface. So, this word appropriate is very important. So, depending upon the problem, so we have to design the, uh, the uh, DSS interface. So, like uh, various uh, questions or various output. So, all those things uh, should be there within the interface. So, that um, uh, the data input can be given easily and then the uh, output can be taken easily and then the decision maker can easily understand the system. And then uh, other important uh, component of the, uh, the DSS is the mathematical models. Actually, mathematical models are important component of DSS. So, as I mentioned it can be 
uh, simulation models or optimization models which helps um, uh, to understand uh, say if particular scenario is uh, implemented or particular plan is implemented what will happen uh, uh, within the system. So, that is what the mathematical models predicts uh, say as a simulation model or an optimization model. So, the commonly used uh, models include optimization, simulation, statistical models, decision analysis, um, then uh, artificial intelligence techniques like uh, genetic algorithms, neural networks etcetera. So, a number of um, mathematical models or computer models are used uh, nowadays. So, that way uh, when we look into uh, decision support system, so um, uh, we can see that uh, uh, say it is actually a semi structured system. So, that means it is not fully computerized, so that the computer take the decision no, it is a decision maker is there. So, um, it is actually a system which uh, helps the decision maker to take the decision. So, that way uh, here in this slides. Uh, I have shown uh, uh, say for example, an unstructured uh, uh, system. So, where the decision maker manager has to find the solution on his own, there are no support system and then uh, here there is a computer based solution. So, the entire solution is through the computer mo uh, model. So, uh, so there is no role for the decision maker or manager, but uh, generally most of the time decision support system means uh, it is a semi structured system where the uh, manager or decision maker and computer uh, come together and then take the decision. So, it is um, uh, that way a semi structured system. So, the basic uh, DSS structure include uh, as I mentioned a database subsystem, model based subsystem, user interface or dialogue subsystems and then uh, knowledge subsystem. So, um, the subsystems are database, model base, then uh, uh, user interface and the knowledge base subsystems. So, let us look into some of the important aspects of these subsystems. So, the database uh, management tools uh, are the database uh, system. Uh, software is used for the management of the database. So, this include the data inputs, then it is processing uh, for up to appropriate formatting and then the output. And uh, the, then a model based subsystem, it is the actually the heart of the system. So, where uh, the various uh, models will be running. Uh, so, that we can say that this uh, model based subsystem is the heart of the system. And then uh, as far as user interface is concerned, uh, this gives the dialogues uh, for as far as the to understand the system uh, or understand the problem. So, that way we can say that it is a face of the system and then uh, the knowledge based subsystem uh, that, that, is the, uh, exp that gives the expertise for solving uh, critical problems stored uh, as rules to be followed uh, during typical uh, situations. So, if then or what will happen, so like that to the knowledge based subsystem. So, this system provide intelligence to decision makers, uh, so that a particular decision uh, can be made by the uh, decision maker. So, that way uh, we can see that uh, uh, say all this database of system or model based of system or the user interface of system or knowledge based of system all are important in uh, decision support systems um, uh, say in its own way. Uh, uh, but the heart of the system we can say as the model base and the face of the system we can say as the dialogues of system or the, the user interface. Uh, so, now uh, say as far as the DSS uh, decision support system structure is concerned uh, uh, when we deal with the database management tools. Uh, so, this database management tools um, contains a, a, a procedural language along with the hierarchical and uh, relational data structure. So, that way the key capabilities of the database uh, which we consider the database of system include extraction, updating, uh, interrelate uh, data from different sources and then retrieve the data, provide uh, comprehensive data security, uh, complex data manipulation. Uh, then uh, manage the uh, data through uh, a data dictionary. So, these are some of the uh, key capabilities as far as a particular database uh, within a DSS. So, uh, there should be option for input the, the data, then uh, say uh, extraction the data, then updating the data, then uh, and the retrieving the data and then uh, various manipulation of the data. So, all those things should be there in the database of system of the uh, DSS uh, which we consider. Uh, and then now say the model based of system is concerned the details uh, are listed here. So, it contains four basic types of models as we already seen. 
uh, strategic models, uh, tactical models, uh, then uh, operational models, uh, mo model building blocks and uh, subroutines. So, that way uh, the strategy, uh, the, these are some of the important uh, uh, components of uh, the model based subsystem. So, the key capabilities of a model based uh, input, it creates uh, new models uh, quickly. So, if a particular scenario is selected or a particular plan is selected, so uh, this um, model based subsystem create new models uh, quickly, maintain wide range of models to support all levels of management, then it uh, interrelates the models with the database. Uh, then access and uh, uh, integrate the model building blocks. So, we can say that uh, from one building blocks to another blocks there will be connection or connectivity should be there. So, all those things should be there in the uh, model uh, based subsystem. Then um, uh, uh, manage model based with uh, management functions uh, analogous to database management. So, uh, the management is very similar to what is there with uh, with respect to database management. So, uh, but um, the model based of systems say as we have seen it is actually heart of the system. So, which has to run for various scenarios or various alternatives and then uh, the output should be the uh, should come and then based upon that um, the uh, the uh, uh, post processing should be done uh, to understand the uh, system behavior. So, that way uh, the model based tools uh, as I already mentioned different uh, modeling techniques commonly used in district support systems include uh, optimization models uh, like uh, uh, say uh, linear programming, dynamic programming uh, like that, then numerical models like final time method, final difference method. So, uh, mainly for a simulation purpose, then artificial neural network or artificial intelligence techniques uh, like uh, artificial neural networks, genetic algorithm, then uh, fuzzy logic based models. Uh, then of course, uh, geography information system and remote sensing based models are also nowadays used when we have to deal with uh, a large database or larger area uh, like um, uh, river basin or a, uh, uh, like a, uh, say watershed uh, larger area which we have to uh, deal uh, generally. Let us have a brief look into various model based tools. So, as I already mentioned the optimization models are uh, generally um, uh, used um, in the DSS support systems. So, actually optimization is uh, done to either minimize the cost or maximize the benefits. So, that is that is very important in most of the uh, uh, say uh, decision making process since most of the time and the decision maker wants to reduce the cost or minimize the cost and he wants to maximize the benefits uh, with respect to various scenarios or with respect to various cases. So, uh, say we can have depending upon the problem we can have uh, various uh, models like linear programming, non-linear programming, dynamic programming, then uh, artificial intelligence techniques like genetic algorithm. So, these are all uh, uh, optimization models um, depending upon the problem say for example, if the objective function and the constraints are linear in nature then we can go for linear programming and uh, if the constraints or one of the, the objective function non-linear we, we can go for non-linear programming and then if it is stage wise then we can go for dynamic programming. Uh, then um, say depending upon the data and then um, uh, say problem we can also go for artificial intelligence techniques like um, uh, genetic algorithm. Uh, then uh, uh, say uh, other type of model based tools like numerical models. So, numerical models uh, say especially to solve partial differential equations or differential equations uh, we use a numerical uh, models especially for simulation purpose. So, this simulation is very important say once we say that a particular uh, plan or particular um, scenario uh, is not then uh, we can run that scenario uh, and then see what will happen. So, that uh, way uh, most of the time in um, numerical models um, or um, uh, different types of models will be very useful and then that gives the simulation simulator results for that particular scenario. So, especially uh, since uh, water related or watershed related problems are very complex. So, that way we have to model uh, we have to solve partial differential equations like St. Venans equations or Navier-Stokes equations. So, uh, in those cases um, uh, there are no analytical solutions available. So, that way we have to use the numerical models like final element method, final difference methods as we have seen in some of the previous lectures. So, we can use these techniques as a, a simulate, simulator or simulating tool uh, 
uh, and uh, that can be also a part of the, the decision support uh, systems. Then uh, say uh, when we are going for spatial modeling uh, geography information systems as I already mentioned earlier. So, GIS based uh, uh, systems we can utilize. So, as we discussed in one of the previous lectures GIS is a computer based systems uh, used for storing, manipulating and analyzing the data. So, it provides timely information in a readily usable form. So, based upon the data uh, we, we can manipulate the data and then generate a different uh, maps like um, uh, topo uh, graphical maps, then land use map, land cover map, soil map, digital elevation models. So, all these aspects we have seen. So, GIS is very helpful especially in the case of watershed management or water resource um, uh, management. Um, uh, so, that way GIS can be effectively used as a part of the decision support systems. And then remote sensing tools uh, wherever huge data is needed and then uh, the temporal variations to be considered then we can use the remote sensing. So, remote sensing data gives the detailed uh, distribution of the parameters uh, basin wide say like river basin or the watershed uh, uh, basis. Then it is useful for distributed modeling of the watershed. So, if we are going for uh, physically based models then remote sensing data is very useful uh, especially land use, land cover and then the spatial variation. Then delineation of watershed, soil type, land use, classification etcetera and all these places we can use remote sensing tools as a uh, model based uh, tool. Then uh, say, uh, say what we are discussing about the, uh, the, uh, the components of the uh, decision support systems. So, now uh, say uh, most of the time uh, say especially related to uh, watershed management or water related issues we have to deal the spatial variation uh, uh, say either a uh, watershed basis or river basin scale or a catchment basis or um, uh, the state wise or the country wise. So, that way we have to see the the spatial variation uh, uh, we say and then uh, when we can generate a decision support system based upon the uh, spatial variation specifically then we can call that type of system as spatial decision support systems. So, spatial uh, decision support systems provide the decision making environment to enable the analysis of geographical information specifically. So, uh, special uh, decision uh, support system or SDSs are DSs with uh, mechanisms for input of spatial data and uh, SDSs allow representation of the complex spatial relations and structures commonly found in uh, spatial data. Then uh, SDSs include analytical techniques uh, unique to spatial and geographical uh, analysis including the statistics. So, generally the GIS is also a part of this uh, SDSS or special uh, decision support systems. So, uh, SDSS very similar to is very similar to the DSS. So, SDSS generally uh, so the three levels of architecture will be there. So, first one is the tools. So, general purpose uh, like hardware and software tools that can be assembled to build a variety of system modules very similar to what is there in the DSS. Then te technical supporter, so SDSs that can be configured to address specific problems through modeling. So, that is the technical supporter, then the builder. So, builder takes domain specific data and develops the SDSs for a, a given applications. So, for particular applications either water related or a soil related then we can have the spe specific uh, special decision support uh, systems. So, then uh, say uh, very similar to DSS any type of DSS special uh, decision support systems uh, will have the database and then uh, a model base. So, like that. So, here again in this slide uh, the uh, various components of special decision support systems are described. Uh, the DBMS or the database management systems. So, like locational, uh, topological and uh, thematic data types to support um, cartographic display, spatial query, analytical modeling etcetera. So, DBMS will be effectively a part of most of the SDSs. Then MBMS or model based management systems as we have seen for DSS uh, very similar to that here spatial decision support system also will be having the model based management system to support statistical and numerical models which stores the models uh, instead of data. 
then each model may uh, may be a small piece of code to solve a, pa a part of a particular algorithm. So, that way we can plan uh, in the uh, DSS or SDSS. The knowledge based reasoning image processing are, can also be part of the, the uh, uh, management um, uh, uh, say um, uh, or model based management system or MBMS. Then graphical and tablet report generators very similar to uh, DSS are, are there in, in the case of SDSS also. And this can be two dimensional or three dimensional uh, the displays can be in two dimensions or three dimensions. And then also we can choose uh, either bar charts, pie charts, scatter plots, line plots etcetera uh, uh, within the SDSS uh, very similar to DSS. Uh, then uh, say uh, it can be also application specific plots and reports uh, can be generated within the uh, SDSS. So, that way SDSS or special decision support system is DSS only. So, but uh, generally when we deal with um, either watershed or river basin scale then uh, we have to deal with a lot of spatial data and that way we call this, um, uh, this DSS as special uh, DSS or special uh, SDSS. So, now uh, before going uh, to discuss the various aspects of water um, uh, resource management or watershed management uh, related to DSS. So, let us look into uh, the development methodology as far as decision support system is concerned. So, here the various steps uh, I have listed here. Before we develop a DSS, we should uh, assess the needs. So, what, what are the things that is we are expected from a decision support systems? So, what are the things should be there? Uh, within the systems and um, what will be the input, what will be the output from the system. So, that way we have to do a uh, needs assessment uh, when we uh, develop a uh, DSS. Then a DSS model conceptualizations. So, uh, sim very similar to we conceptualize a model, uh, we have to conceptualize the various components of the decision support systems. And then as given in the slides, the database uh, development. So, we have to develop the database. Um, uh, so, that is uh, one of the essential component of the DSS. Then next step is general DSS development. We can based upon all these aspects, we can have a generalized DSS uh, system. And then uh, say for the particular problems, say to deal with the particular either water related, soil related or land related issues, we can customize the system. So, that is so called uh, DSS customization. So, that is the next step. And then once it is done, the system is ready. So, now we can go for testing and then further we can refine and then see how the system is working. So, that is the next step uh, as shown in this slide. So, DSS uh, testing and refinements. Then uh, say once it is uh, testing is done and if it is working properly, then um, uh, we can go for typical applications. So, that where DSS applications and demonstrations. So, we can for the particular area or particular system or particular plans, we can uh, have the DSS applications and then demonstrate. And then we can evaluate the system and then fine tune it. Uh, then uh, say of course, once it is ready, uh, we have to train the, uh, the uh, people uh, who are going to use it. So, that way dissemination training and outreach plans we can prepare. Uh, so, the, uh, then uh, say based upon the needs, we can prepare a final report also. So, these are some of the essential steps uh, as far as the DSS development is concerned. So, a systematic approach uh, we can follow uh, as far as a DSS uh, development is concerned. So, now uh, we will discuss uh, say what related issues. So, whatever we have discussed the, so far uh, were related to uh, general aspects of district support system or SDS special district support systems, various components, uh, then its structure and then uh, various subsystems uh, like that. So, now uh, when we deal with uh, water related issues, so as we have seen in many of our earlier uh, lectures in this course. So, the uh, water related like uh, rainfall to run off or various things um, including the climate, the ch changes are uh, drastic from one location to another location, spatial variation is too much and then temporal variation or time dependent variations also there. So, that way the main need of uh, digital support system um, say due to all these changes, digital support system is very essential uh, say when we deal with um, uh, water related issues or water resource uh, plans or watershed development plans. So, uh, say here um, uh, say uh, the uh, 
temporal variations can be either daily, daily variation, weekly variation, monthly variation or seasonal variation or yearly variation or decadal variation or century variation where especially climate change issues are there. Especially when we deal with um, water related issues then how is the rainfall variation, temperature variation, uh, drought pattern. So, the weather forecasts are very important. So, the spatial scale can be uh, either uh, say, uh, say few square kilometer or la say large area like um, uh, say thousands of square, square kilometers or even million square kilometer like that. So, the, this is temporal variation, spatial variation and then uh, uh, the, the issues are concerned uh, like um, either weather forecasting or extended seasonal weather predictions then climate outlook and then if it is long term prediction or long term uh, effects then a decadal variation, decadal variability or climate change which is say we have to consider century variations. Uh, then uh, say especially various say, uh, problems like um, uh, flood problem or drought problem or water availability problem. So, that be various problems we will be considering and then um, say within the area uh, river basin scale or watershed scale then um, uh, if the, the, the reservoir is there how to operate the reservoir. So, reservoir operation then uh, uh, surface water management, ground water management, then uh, ecosystems management. Uh, then of course, uh, watershed based uh, management system. So, all these uh, things we, we can uh, consider uh, say within a decision support systems. So, uh, in a nutshell we can say that when we uh, deal with um, especially water related or watershed related problems, decision support system is very essential uh, since we have to evaluate various plans, various um, uh, scenarios and then we can come up uh, with uh, uh, appropriate outcome. So, that way uh, decision support systems will be uh, very useful uh, to deal with the water related issues, water resource management or watershed uh, management uh, plans. So, now DSS for water resource planning. So, D decision support system provides uh, water management authorities a well structured uh, user friendly practical and uh, complete water resource management information systems. So, that way we have a number of uh, software number of packages are available nowadays. So, we can have user friendly practical and complete uh, water resource management plans. Then a DSS may assist decision makers in taking the uh, right decisions on the basis of uh, good comparisons of different strategies under various scenarios and combine the benefits of uh, geography information systems, expert systems and simulation models. So, various things we can combine together within a uh, DSS research support systems. So, that where DSS is very essential in water resource planning and management. Uh, and uh, also say within the context of watershed management. So, water resource planning problems are generally resource wise complexity is too much, society wise complexity is too much and then economic wise complexity also there. So, water resource watershed planning and management that's, that is that way it is a daunting challenge. So, that way DSS uh, research support system will be uh, very useful to deal with uh, water resource plans or watershed management plans. So, a typical uh, 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 components of a DSS related to water resource planning uh, the various components I have listed here. So, of course, the basic components as we have seen earlier like a database management system uh, um, say uh, management based model systems then um, the user interface these are all essential components, but uh, various other components related to hydrological aspects or related to modeling aspects uh, these are listed here. Uh, like hydrological information systems, geographic information systems, then information system for um, other uh, required data, then remote sensing data analysis systems, then a statistical and time series analysis tool, uh, demand projection module, hydrologic data analysis system and planning, optimization and simulation module, economic analysis module, graphical user interface. So, like that uh, say many of these components can be there depending upon the problem, depending upon the uh, river basin or watershed um, uh, for which we are developing the uh, decision support system. So, especially so typically when we consider hydrological information system and data processing say uh, like water resource or watershed uh, system is concerned. Uh, we can set the objectives and then um, uh, we can have the uh, various uh, data from the various agencies. Then uh, say we can record it, validate it, process it and st store it. 
then uh, the users like decision makers can use it, policy makers, engineers, scientists, user groups. So, various uh, users can utilize it. So, that way we can develop the uh, systems. So, now here in this uh, slide, a typical decision support system related to watershed management is shown here. So, as I mentioned the temporal uh, data, then uh, spatial data, then socio-economic data. So, all this data we, we should have within the DSS system and then we should have database or hydraulic information systems and then uh, various tools like statistical or optimization tools can be there and of course, uh, since uh, very much data intensive is the process. So, that way geographic information systems and remote sensing we can integrate. Then uh, say related to the various say for example, if it the problem is related to water, so then we can uh, assess the water demands for the particular watershed and water available, water supply, then uh, we can have the prediction uh, models. Then uh, we can find out water balance st studies using the models, then demand management. Then uh, uh, we can have the hydrological modeling systems uh, where we can run various models then uh, using uh, simulation models or optimization models and then uh, we can uh, generate the alternative plans uh, depending upon the problems and then we can have the expert systems uh, for that uh, depending upon the problem. And then uh, this all these things will be rep uh, represented in a graphical user interface uh, integrated in GIS or uh, hydrological information systems. So, GUI integrated in GIS or HIS. So, that way finally, now various plans are available and then the decision maker can um, use the total systems to uh, select particular uh, alternative or particular plan or particular scenario. So, this shows a typical uh, uh, decision support system uh, related to watershed uh, management. So, in the literature if you go through a uh, number of D DSS softwares are available for water resource planning and management. So, some of the important uh, softwares I have listed here like um, um, Mulino Decision Support System uh, from Italy, then Mike Basin from uh, DHI, Basins uh, from US EPA, then uh, SDSS uh, from Technical University of Athens, then IQQM uh, from Queensland Department of Natural Resources, then NCS Norwegian Institute of Water Research, RELM uh, from uh, Australia. Uh, RIBS SIM, RIBS SIM by Delft Hydraulics, WAP by Stockholm uh, in, uh, Environment Institute, Aqua Tool, I, IRAS. So, like that uh, number of decision support systems are available. So, depending upon the need, depending upon the problem, we can choose particular uh, decision support systems. So, now before closing today's lecture, let, let us look into one specific case study, uh, how effectively uh, a decision support system, uh, say especially a GIS based system can help the decision maker to understand how the scenario uh, related to uh, development of a reservoir and then uh, its uh, flooding region. So, this uh, here, uh, this is the case study is Barbi reservoir on Barbi river in Badalapur uh, uh, in Maharashtra. So, th uh, this is the uh, area uh, Barvi river here, this is the reservoir area. So, this uh, details are taken from uh, a paper and a report by uh, Professor Venkatachalam and J.K. Suri in 1995. Uh, so, this is the, the Barvi catchment drainage map. So, here uh, say uh, the details uh, the of the drainage system is uh, uh, given here. So, the length of the dam is 746.7 meter, storage capacity 178.5 uh, million cubic meter and then uh, catchment area is about 166 square kilometer. Uh, so, this is uh, the origin is from Barvi river at village Pimboli Taluka here, this is the location. So, here the objective of this study was to generate current land use land cover information from the remote sensing and then simulate a new submergence for each value of uh, raised uh, height of Barvi reservoir and compute increase in capacity of reservoir then identify the submergence uh, village wise land use land cover wise then provide necessary inputs for the decision makers to take optimal decisions based on cost versus benefit analysis. So, this was this were the objectives of this study. So, here the part of uh, the DSS using GIS is uh, presented. So, actually the existing height in this uh, dam was earlier 67 meter. So, if the 67 meter dam is there then uh, 
uh, the, the say water body uh, typically will be like this. So, uh, here as I mentioned uh, in the earlier slides uh, say uh, the water spread area and then the capacity is there. So, the question is if the, the, the reservoirs or the dam size is increased, the height is increased and then um, reservoir area will be increased then how much flooding can take place, but correspond how much will be the uh, the storage capacity will be available. So, that is what the study has been done here. So, this is the uh, barrel catchment land use uh, map. So, here this shows the water body, then green color shows the forest, then uh, this color degraded forest and then open scrub agricultural land use the yellow. And then uh, say based upon the available data, um, 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 Professor Vengarajalam and her team uh, uh, say studied in detail uh, in a GIS environment, the decision support system in a GIS environment. So, this shows if the level of the uh, dam is raised to 70.6 meter from the previous 67 meter, then how much area will be flooded. So, you can see that uh, the corresponding to this say so much area will be flooded and then corresponding storage is increased to uh, 96.3 uh, million cubic uh, meter. Uh, so, uh, the uh, say uh, correspondingly uh, the, the increase increase will be uh, th this much uh, will be the storage capacity increase. Then uh, say if the level is increased to when the level is rise to 72.6 then uh, how the the say storage capacity is gone to 145.6 million cubic meter and then you can see that how which are the area will be uh, flooded. And then again if it is increased to 76 meter then how much area will be flooded. So, like that the studies uh, were conducted uh, by uh, uh, the, the, the experts. So, GIS method is used to utilize alternative scenarios of impact on land use and the population at different uh, elevation levels with the increased volume of water storage and presented to the, the government uh, to take uh, suitable action. So, uh, how much area will be say the level is this 70.6 or 72.6 or 76 how much is the area will be affected uh, in a submergence in hectare uh, is shown here. So, the corresponding elevation level and increased storage capacity uh, in a million cubic meter is also shown here. So, using such a system uh, the, the decision maker can make a decision okay, if uh, this is the level what will be the flooding and what will be the, the benefits like how much water can be stored. So, that way uh, when we put uh, the, the system in a GIS environment, so a decision support system is generated and that can be used by the decision maker. So, to conclude this uh, today's lecture, so some of the remarks like water management involves many processes which are modeled individually or collectively by the decision support systems and DSS helps the water managers to uh, take the optimal decisions in complex situations as we have already seen and DSS are developed uh, applied to a particular basin or a basin with uh, similar characteristics. So, depending upon the problem the case will be say we have to specific, specifically make the DSS. Uh, depending upon the needs and DSS needed for uh, all the irrigation water sh sheds to make most of the available fresh water uh, so in an effective way. So, and then watershed management is concerned since uh, the people have to interact participate in decision making we have to do. So, interactive decision support system so is always uh, very effective or uh, always the need of the hour. So, this interactive DSS uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, advantage is that end user can input his data and analyze and query to get output solution in less time with a minimum cost. So, what will happen the various scenarios can be uh, generated easily. So, these are some of the advantages of such a uh, decision support systems. So, these are some of the references used for today's lecture and some of the questions from today's lecture uh, critically study role of decision support systems in development of effective watershed management plans. So, these details you can get from internet, evaluate the capabilities of various DSS softwares used for water resource planning as we, uh, we have seen one on the slide and details you can get from the internet. Then a uh, few other questions for self evaluation, illustrate characteristics of a typical DSS, what are the important components of a DSS, describe important model based tools, 
mention step by step methodology for DSS development and implementation, describe a typical hydrologic information systems. So, these details you can answer based upon today's lecture. Then few assignment questions, why do we need a DSS, explain the typical structure of a DSS, illustrate the characteristics of special uh, DSS, describe the typical features uh, of um, DSS for water source planning and management, illustrate a typical decision support systems for uh, watershed management. So, these details uh, if you go through the lecture you can uh, get all these uh, the uh, answers to all these questions. So, as an unsolved problem for your watershed area explore the possibility of using a DSS for effective water management plans. From the literature identify suitable DSS package for watershed management uh, plans uh, which are the other areas where DSS can be effectively used in watershed management development plans. So, water related issues we have seen. So, even uh, soil related soil erosion problems or uh, uh, rainwater harvesting so or various schemes we can have the decision support systems. So, uh, today we have discussed about the decision support systems and uh, its role in uh, water resource management and watershed management plans. So, that is what we discussed in today's lecture. Uh, so, further we will see how an integrated um, uh, say system of GIS remote sensing and computer modeling can effectively utilized in uh, watershed development uh, plans. Thank you.